Welcome to another presentation about the Carolina Bays. This presentation examines information about the Younger Dryas Cataclysm that has been discarded as irrelevant but may have a grain of truth. The idea involves an extraterrestrial impact in Hudson Bay for which there is no evidence for hypervelocity impact and the current general consensus is that it is of tectonic origin. After publishing a paper in 2007 that established the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, Richard Firestone published another paper in 2009 titled The Case for the Younger Dryas Extraterrestrial Impact Event, Mammoth, Megafauna and Clovis Extinction 12,900 Years Ago. The paper stated that at the base of the black mat at nine Clovis H sites in North America, numerous extraterrestrial impact markers were found, including magnetic grains highly enriched in iridium, magnetic microspherules, vesicular carbon spherules enriched in cubic, hexagonal nanodiamonds, and other proxies. The same impact markers were found mixed throughout the sediments of 15 Carolina bays, which are elliptical depressions along the Atlantic coast whose major axes point toward either the Great Lakes or Hudson Bay. Firestone's papers were harshly opposed by impact experts who published a Requiem paper for the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. The Requiem paper said that the physical evidence interpreted as signatures of an impact event consists of evidence that has been largely rejected by the scientific community and is no longer in widespread discussion, including the impact origin of the Carolina Bays. The paper also rejected the reported Younger Dryas magnetic spherules because they are consistent with the diffuse, non-catastrophic input of micrometeorite ablation fallout, probably augmented by anthropogenic and other terrestrial spherular grains. In spite of what seems like overwhelming evidence against an extraterrestrial impact in Hudson Bay, it is interesting to investigate some of the clues that guide researchers toward that conclusion. This is not an obsession with conspiracy theories or pseudoscience, it is just a desire to satisfy scientific curiosity and see where the evidence leads. This image shows the ice coverage during the last glacial maximum. Throughout the ice age, even as late as 9,000 years ago, Hudson Bay was covered with ice. If this is true, it is not logical to claim that there was an extraterrestrial impact in Hudson Bay 12,900 years ago that formed the semicircular Nastapoca Arc. This image also highlights New Jersey, whose northern half was covered with ice during the last glacial maximum. The Carolina base in New Jersey look like pockmarks that do not have a precise orientation like the base in North or South Carolina. This later image illustrates some Carolina base found in the southwest part of New Jersey. The base measure about 200 meters in diameter and they are relatively small compared to the base found further south. Many of the Carolina Bays in New Jersey have been cataloged in the Ovoid Basin Survey by Michael Davies as having a bell shape with an azimuth of 121.5 degrees, which leads to Saginaw Bay as shown in the inset. The Carolina Bays in place on flat terrain tend to be elliptical, but inclined terrain affects the resultant shape. Several years ago, I studied the effects of impacts on inclined terrain and found that the resultant basin shapes are different for uphill and downhill impacts. In this illustration, the projectile hits the ground traveling from left to right as indicated by the white arrows. The red arrows show the direction of the liquefied terrain flow after the impact. In a downhill impact, soil flows into the back end of the impact cavity as the liquefied soil flows downhill. In an uphill impact, the forward end of the impact cavity collapses into the cavity as the liquefied soil flows downhill in the opposite direction of the impact. In both cases, the uphill side of the cavity is deformed by material flowing into the cavity, while simultaneously, the basin is stretched downhill by the force of gravity acting on viscous ground. These modifications to the impact cavities are not just theoretical. They can be tested experimentally by tilting the target container during the viscous relaxation stage that reduces the depth of the cavity. Taking a closer look at the previous image, we find a bay that was not marked in the ovoid basin survey. The basin is on fairly flat terrain and it still preserves its elliptical shape. Some fluvial channels traverse the basin, but the margins are distinct enough to select some points for fitting an ellipse. The ellipse fits the points with an error of 2.8%, which is satisfactory, and the azimuth of the ellipse is 147.2 degrees. The orientation of the elliptical basin brings up the question of whether all these bays need to be reinterpreted as having been created from another direction that is more consistent with the elliptical basin. Basing a decision on features that have not been affected by the inclination of the terrain is similar to taking samples from areas with less contamination to use for reference. It is not cherry-picking of elliptical basins. 
These elliptical basins in New Jersey have azimuths ranging from 148 degrees to 164 degrees. They are definitely not pointing to Saginaw Bay. They could be pointing to Lake Ontario or Hudson Bay. In a previous presentation, I called attention to some elliptical bays in Minnesota that are oriented toward Hudson Bay. The combined orientations of the basins in Minnesota and New Jersey look a lot like the lines from Richard Firestone's paper. Many of the ideas in Firestone's 2009 paper still survive today in the publications of the Comet Research Group, but the Carolina Bays and the impact in Hudson Bay, which were prominent topics in this paper, have been abandoned. The Journal of Cosmology, where this paper was published, also has encountered problems. The journal has been criticized for improper peer review and promoting fringe theories. Several years ago, the journal failed to renew its domain name and all the contents were migrated to a new domain, but the links to the images were not updated so they don't work. A very complicated picture is emerging from the study of the orientations of elliptical basins such as the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Rainwater Basins. There are multiple convergence points for the elliptical basins that have been fitted with ellipses by the least squares method. This leads to the conclusion that if these basins were made by secondary impacts of glacier ice, there must have been multiple extraterrestrial impacts on the Laurentide ice sheet. These cosmic projectiles probably originated from a comet that broke apart when it went around the Sun and formed the meteor stream that intersected the orbit of the Earth. Thank you for joining me in the study of the Carolina Bays. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool by Michael Davies in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.